again, this is a way to a wonderful life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, and our way to a wonderful life message this morning is titled, Be at Peace Regarding the Need. Be at Peace Regarding the Need. Now, there's a great difference in the things that we want and the things that we need for most of us. There are those that tell us that God meets all our needs, but for many of us, meeting our needs does not fulfill our heart's desire. For example, we may need transportation to and from work. A bicycle, for many of us, would meet this need, yet in our heart we may want a BMW X5, and if we receive a bicycle, what we want is not met, but what we need is. This is why we must make a definite or positive choosing of what it is that we need to fulfill our heart's desires, or otherwise we will end up with disappointment and perhaps a bicycle that ends up in our next garage sale. Now, many of those who teach spiritual prayer or effective prayer will teach us to say lovely words, and these lovely words will console our mind, but they won't draw to us those things necessary for us to realize the good that we want. The mastermind Jesus stated that we are to ask and we shall receive, and this asking must be a definite or positive choosing. And what is meant by a positive choosing? It means we are positive that this is something that we know will take our mind from wanting to rejoicing, not disappointment or compromise with the desires of our heart. In the Aramaic language of Jesus, ask means to claim. We should all get that in our mind. Ask means to claim. Claim the good that is ours. Don't claim the good that's anyone else's. Say, I will realize within myself that God has created an abundant universe, that there's enough for everyone to have enough to share and to spare, and that as I claim my good, I know that claiming that good, receiving that good, will not only prosper me, but will prosper all those around me. And so I realize and I accept for myself this very thing that I believe will fulfill my heart's desire. So if we can get those words into our mind and believe them to be true and accept them as the truth for us, then we will find ourselves realizing the greater thing still. There is no peace and no satisfaction in merely accepting what meets our needs. The desires of our heart are just as important to us as the things that we need. We need food, and most of us need food every day, but there is no great sense of satisfaction in eating beans and potatoes when we desire to eat in nice restaurants or bistros where food is opulently prepared and satisfying both to our need for food and our sense of living a prosperous life. The desires of our heart that we are to ask and receive are those things that bring us a greater sense of joy. People who feel a genuine sense of joy in their lives are always reflecting this joy towards all those they come into contact with. A lack of joy is a symptom of no peace and no satisfaction in our soul. No peace and no satisfaction in our soul. You know, life is a gift, and it's to be a joyful gift. It's a, a gift to be, to be received in a spirit of joy. You know, Jesus said the Father is spirit, not a spirit, but spirit, omnipresent, everywhere present, omnipotent, all power, omniscient, all-knowing intelligence, and we're to worship him in spirit and in truth. That means in the spirit of joy and recognizing that God has gifted us with this thing called life, and that we're here to enjoy it. We're here to, we're here to find things that give us satisfaction and give us a sense of purpose and a sense of being alive to life in a greater way. So let's look at these words from the great W. Frederick Keeler from his book, Christian Victory Instruction. And although this is written with some traditional words describing God, we could understand that the words Father and He and His and Him refer to the unseen presence of intelligence, power, and spirit. Thinking as though you were in the presence of God, Mr. Keeler writes, is the most simple kind of thinking and the most powerful thinking. Let's go back and look at that again. Thinking as though you were in the presence of God is the most simple kind of thinking and the most powerful thinking. But most of us have a false habit of believing that we must do something in the nature of a great or mysterious mental stunt <coughs> excuse me, in order to come into the full powers of being. 
To practice the present will cure us of such nonsense and will show us the way. Those people who approach God habitually in consciousness will surely experience healing and will come into a guided wisdom. To practice the presence by thinking in special prayer times, we simply do our best to rest alertly in God's peace. In thought, we dwell upon and within God's peace. We endeavor to think of God as God would like us to think. God is our creator, our protector, the one who loves us, and we must praise God every day. We sit before God in peace. We offer God the good things of our hearts and of our hearts and of our thoughts, and in turn, we accept from God the good things that God has prepared for us. At first, we do this very simply, but we find that a sort of science develops within it all. We speak, we rest, we listen with our hearts, not with our ears, and God speaks to us in spirit, in intuitional ideas. It becomes prayer and answer to prayer, and we find that our troubles begin to dissolve. Not only does our troubled mind become more calm, more perfectly at peace, but our whole life changes and everything about us changes for the better. Friends come into our lives and things that are easily recognizable as being better for us occur, happen. Within a reasonable time, we prove that we are dealing with a tremendous law for good, for our good, for God's good, and for the good of everyone. No one can deny this nor does anyone ever deny it who has really and repeatedly tried it. This does not mean that one or two or a dozen attempts of this kind will accomplish all this, but it does mean that it will all happen perfectly according to our ability actually to come into the present. It is something to be learned, and it is something God will help us to learn. In fact, God will give us the perfect ability to come into the present if we persist in the seeking, if we persist in the seeking. Now, a lot of people find this unusual, but it's not unusual at all when we think about Jesus and how Jesus went out into the wilderness so that he could be quiet and he could be still and he could still his mind. And Jesus telling us to, to go into the closet of our mind, go into the closet, and he says that what God hears in secret, God rewards us with openly. But we must learn to do it. We must learn to do it and let the, that, let the natural process of the presence being aware of, uh, our awareness being, uh, being aware that the presence is available and the presence is with us happen. It's as simple as finding a, a, a comfortable seat in your home or in your office or somewhere where you won't be disturbed and just sitting in the silence, closing your mind and closing your eyes to the world and close your eyes and look up and just feel that within you there's something that's seeking to, to, to find your recognition of it. There's something seeking your recognition of it, seeking your identification with it, and let that spirit, that, that spirit, which is God, which is God's Holy Spirit, begin to move through your mind. And you may have to do this many, many times, but the the fruit of your labor, the fruit of, fruit of your efforts, I should say, will be so amazing and so wonderful that you'll be so at peace and so at ease with your life that you will wonder why you never did this before. But it takes persistence, persistence. Each and every one of us have that ability to be persistent, but not everyone is willing to break the old habits, break the old routines and do this very simple thing of sitting in the silence, sitting in the silence and inviting the spirit to move through, through our mind and our heart and our soul and do it effectively. But we can all do it. It's very simple. God does not make anything difficult for any of us, for any of us. And just as Jesus tells us to go into that closet, he means to shut out the world, shut out our thoughts, don't go to God with our needs. Go to God in peace and know that God will fulfill whatever it is in our lives, guide us and direct us, give us the right idea, bring to our awareness all that we need to know to realize that peace in our experience.
When the mastermind Jesus called us to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul, and equally important to love your neighbor as yourself, he was telling us that the presence of God is omnipresent, everywhere present and within every living thing, and our recognition is registered when we let love be our first thought about everyone and everything. To love life is to love God. So we know that we must love life. We must love life. We must find the joy in life, the joy in being alive to this, to this thing called life in a greater way. The spiritual practices that we find in our mind that cause all good things to be added into us are simple, but require, once again, persistence. As Jesus said, keep your mind stayed on God, and all good things will be added into you. And we've got to keep our mind stayed on God in the silence in the silence. It is persistence that has caused so many people to realize the right ideas, the right guidance, and the next step that was necessary to create that something new for themselves and for the world around their experience, the peace of God, unless we are willing to seek it. And we must seek it in our mind even when our mind is filled with doubts and worries and frustrations and fear. And as we turn from these things and persist in realizing this peace, we shall experience it. We shall experience it, but we must be persistent. We must know that peace is, peace is available since it is a part of the spirit. Peace and love and joy and happiness and harmony and beauty, all these things are part of the spirit. We look out into our universe in which we live this creation of the Almighty, this creation of the infinite intelligence that God is, and we can see all these things. Excuse me. We can see everything at peace, everything in harmony, restless and, and rest or overly excitable is the human species. The human species. Everything else is at peace with their life, at peace with their purpose. Every other living thing knows its purpose and knows what it's supposed to be doing and what it's all about, except the human species that denies God, that denies the good, that denies our creator, denies that we, have, we are created in the image and likeness of God, denies that in the unseen and in the invisible, in the spirit, is where all the power is. There's no power in the, in the physical. It's all in the unseen. Now, the great Eric Butterworth, in his book, The Universe is Calling, shares his wisdom about how finding our inner peace is so important. He writes, the interesting thing is that when you have a concern over some difficulty which has caused you to pray about it, you approach your prayer with a built-in anxiety or tension. You ever, you ever have that happen? We, I think we all have. The interesting thing... <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that when you have a concern over some difficulty which has caused you to pray about it, you approach your prayer with a built in anxiety or tension. And sometimes we approach our prayer with unbelief, that we don't even really believe that what it is that we are thinking, what it is that we're praying for, can actually happen. Thus, the very first step in the science of prayer is the conscious act of letting go. The very first step in the science of prayer is the conscious act of letting go. And that's why Jesus said, I of mine own self can do nothing. I can't do anything, so I must let go and let God. I can't do this myself. I can't improve my health. I can't improve my success. I can't improve my prosperity. I can't improve without God. So I must let go and let God. So the first step in the science of prayer is the conscious act of letting go. Just say to yourself, I let this go and I let God move through my mind, my heart, and my soul. So Eric Butterworth tells us if you begin your prayer with a judgment about the severity of the problem, you are saying in effect, boy, this is going to be a difficult one. You may clench your fists and tense your body it will be very much like driving with the brakes on, driving with the brakes on. When we go to prayer, we want to go with a positive affirmation within our mind that it is the Father that doeth the work. Let go of our responsibility to make things happen. Let go of our human 
awareness, our human knowledge about the thing, and let the great unseen power and intelligence and spirit of God move through our mind, our heart, and our soul, and will direct us and guide us to what we need to do and what is ours to do, and let God do God's perfect work for us. Take it into your mind before you pray. When that which is perfect comes, that which is imperfect comes to an end. When that which is perfect comes, that which is imperfect comes to an end. And through this prayer, I'm beginning that process of dissolving, releasing, eliminating, loosing the imperfect from my mind, my heart, my soul, and from my experience. Let's go back to Eric Butterworth. He writes, so settle with the attitude of hopelessness. Deny it, let it go. Prayer is no time for physical tension. If your hands are taut, that is a good signal that you need to let go. You may say, I have prayed all night about this problem, but you are deluding yourself. That was not prayer. You were holding on to the problem all night. You may have commenced your prayer with, dear Lord, and concluded it with amen, but you probably had an orgy of worry and self-pity in between. Let go and let God. It's that simple. Just say it to yourself. I let go and let God. So anything that we, we let ourselves bring into our mind must be that it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. The Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. How wonderful that is. To think that thought, let go and let God, and follow those words of Jesus in Luke 12:32, the gospel, the good news from 12:32, Luke. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. And let yourself realize in your mind that that kingdom. It's a spirit of peace and joy and happiness and harmony and beauty. It's a feeling of enthusiasm for life, a loving life, loving God, loving every living thing that you encounter in life. So it is the infinite intelligence, power, and spirit that brings to us what it is that we need and what it is that our heart desires all at the same time. As Eric Butterworth, Eric Butterworth tells us, the whole universe is conspiring to establish each and every one of us in health and harmony. So let go and let it unfold. The universe is calling us to wholeness. The universe is calling us to wholeness. So God wants the wholeness of success, the wholeness of health, the wholeness of joy for each and every one of us. Why? Because we're all a part of God. We're all part of this intelligence and this power and this spirit. This intelligence that clothes our spirit in human form is part of God. And that human form that we're in is so we can enjoy this thing called life, so we can feel the presence of material things. All power, all intelligence, all that we're going to find in our mind is from the one mind, which is God that it's all coming to us from the great unseen. And that's why we must go back to what we've learned from the great W. Frederick Keeler in his book, Christian Victory Instruction. We must learn to be persistent and go into the silent. Thinking as though you were in the presence of God is the most simple kind of thinking and the most powerful thinking, he tells us. But most of us have a false habit of believing that we must do something in the nature of a great or mysterious mental stunt in order to come into the full powers of being. To practice the presence will cure us of such nonsense and will show us the way. You know, you have people that are <clears throat> sending, I'll tell them what they want to to speak to. I bet psychic had something in her mind that wasn't in your mind. There's only one mind. There's only one spirit. There's only one intelligence. That is God. So seek within your own mind what you need to know and save yourself $450. There are people that go to India and go up on mountains and thinking that they're going to run over to the Buddhist ashrams and sit, with, sit in the, 
the stark, the stark lot's going to find God for them. There's no God in the Buddhist camp any more than there's a God anywhere else. God is omnipresent, everywhere present. Where I stand is holy ground. We read in the scripture, so right where we are. You don't have to send $250 to buy somebody's CDs. Just go into the silence and learn what you need to know because nobody else knows what you need to know but the infinite knower, which is God. Thinking as though you were in the presence of God is the most simple kind of thinking and the most powerful thinking. Those people who approach God habitually in consciousness will surely experience healing and will come into a guided wisdom. Now, what does it mean by healing? It means that we want to get to the wholeness, the wholeness of health, the wholeness of success, the wholeness of joy, the wholeness of prosperity, the wholeness of loving life and loving ourselves. We want to get to that. Then we're healed. To practice the presence by thinking in special prayer times, we simply do our best to rest alertly in God's peace. In thought, we dwell upon and within God's peace. We endeavor to think as God would like us to think. God is our creator, our protector, the one who loves us unconditionally. We must praise God, rejoice in God. We must sit before God in peace. We must offer God the good things of our hearts and of our thoughts. And in turn, we can accept from God the good things that God has prepared for us, for each and every one of us. Let's take it into our mind. What one can do, all can do. It is the law of the universe. It's the law of God. And when Jesus said, go into the closet, he meant to shut out the world. Go sit in the silence. Turn within, knowing that you're turning within to something. You're not turning within to your brain. You're not turning within to your physical self, but to the, the spirit in which you live and move and have your being. So turn within to the kingdom of God and find your peace and find your satisfaction with life. We all must take the time, persistence, persistence. Don't lack persistence. Don't let, don't let persistence be your enemy. Take persistence into your mind and realize that right where you are, God is looking for you, looking for us to recognize God, to realize God is present. You know, the, we realize the air that we breathe is present, even though we can't see it. We realize that the, the gravity is present, even though we can't see it. So let's get back into that understanding and knowing that God is present right where we are, even though we may not see it. And every day, I'll be in the world. We must be not of the world. That not of the world means that we are in the spirit, in the spirit of joy and happiness and loving God with all our heart, our, all our, with all our soul, with all our mind, and loving our neighbor, which is everybody we come into contact with as ourselves, knowing that we're all in the spirit, we're all in God's loving spirit, and we let it be so, and we let it be so every day. It is the Father's good pleasure, tell yourself, it is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom, to give me to give me all that meets my every need and all that fulfills my heart's desire. So as we take, so we have our, 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 our way now to find something, something within the silence of our mind that's greater than anything else we have found before. Both Keeler and Butterworth have given us insight into the nature of spirit and how it responds to us. We know that it always corresponds to us, and so we must give it that, something to correspond to that it can work through with peace with the need, peace with the problem, peace with the good desires, and soon enough, always right on time, we shall realize peace, peace with our needs and peace with our heart's desires, and so it is, amen. So once again, I want to thank you for being with me this morning. I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on W.